For each of the things that I have lost, I have been put in contact with absolutely marvelous people that I never would have encountered otherwise. People like you that I've never met in person, but you and I are capable of having this conversation. And you know, look, I wouldn't know that you existed, but for the fact that we had been thrown out of the same academy at different times for different crimes. And uh, I guess this is the thing I hope people will understand is that the horror of what is happening, of us losing track of who we are and what we've learned and what it means is only matched by the unusual fact of the dissidents being driven together and discovering each other in a way that would have been impossible until, I don't know, 50 years ago, right? And there is a tremendous amount of solace in discovering the high quality people who have said no and um, have been ejected and are now just becoming aware of the parallel others. I find something um, as, as dystopian as this moment is, I find something very hopeful in, uh, in all of the marvelous people who, who have been forced to the surface by it. It's a beautiful kind of poetic irony in some sense. It's also, it's very sad to me when I hear people who have been hurt by what's happened over the last couple of years by the mandates or whatever, social ostracization or whatever, that they speak as though, um, uh, sadness and badness in life are inevitable as a result of these things as though, and, and you know, that's coupled with language. Like I'm, I'm forced to make a certain choice. I'm forced to abide by the mandates or whatever. But I think, you know, one of the things that, that, that the story that you are telling shows is that we can be coerced, we can be manipulated, we can face pressures from all sides that make us feel like our uh, scope of choice is not what it was. But we cannot be forced to be other than what we want to be in our souls. 